Hi there. If you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Merzal and my videos deal with home automation, smart home stuff, DIY electronics and so on. If you're a returning visitor or a subscriber, you might remember from the past that I had a video about using a 3D printer and a couple of free software to basically turn any shape into a diffuser for an LED light. But um, that was half of a project because um, back at the time I was creating um, LED night light, a smart LED night light for my daughter's bedroom. But uh, how did that project end up? Well, let me show you. If you are interested, keep watching. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, believe me, it's working. Ignore the flickering that was caused by the camera. And uh, yeah, in every way, I consider this prototype a success. And this whole uh, project as a good learning project. It made me learn about ESP Home. Then I just realized that I don't need to write Arduino code to have an RGB smart light uh, done by myself. Then, uh, of course, the whole integration with Home Assistant was like a breeze. And finally, of course, uh, this new LED I'm using. These are uh, not LED strips, but individual LEDs. And uh, they are through hole components. So you can use them on breadboards. You can use them with protoboards. You can put them into holes in 3D printed objects. Basically, your imagination is the limit. And yeah, now that I mentioned 3D printing, I also learned a few stuff about 3D printing because um, Printing the enclosure or the diffuser for these lights proven to be a bit more complicated than I first anticipated, but I will show you later. First, let's just uh, pick this thing apart and let me show you what's inside. So what you see here is like 100% honest tinkering and not really a professional job, but I'm still pretty happy with it. So two part enclosure and a protoboard PCB with some bodge wiring. A GST connector. Actually I could install another one here and probably in the next next iteration there will be a second one. So actually the plan is to be able to daisy chain these and uh, also the idea is to have something like a standard size so i can just um, replace the figure and uh, of course the placing of the leds on the panel but other than that um, everything everything should be standardized like the placing of uh, the gst connectors and stuff like that and um, also on the next iteration the enclosure will have some kind of notches to connect them together. So actually you can take multiple of these and uh, turn them into a bigger light fixture or something like that. And of course for the initial one there's the D1 Mini that uh, controls the whole thing. And, uh, I'm thinking about putting this into something like a stand or a different, uh, let's say, module. Let's call this a module where it is hidden. Of course, the plan is to not have it dangling out in the open, especially not in the kids' room, right? So these are the LEDs, and. Um, you can see they look like normal LEDs except that they have this wide glossy look and uh, they have four pins and in every way they act like those uh, addressable RGB LEDs and you can daisy chain them so orange is 5 volts, blue is the ground and the, uh, the green is the data line so you can see that uh, or what I've done here just to daisy chain them and that's it and uh, 
After that point, you can use them like any addressable RGB LEDs, like a strip. Also, these larger ones are really powerful. They provide a lot of light, so I'm really happy with them. And this whole thing just go, goes into this pretty well. And um, yeah, I mentioned that I've learned a new thing about uh, 3D printing. So this was a tricky print because as you see I wanted to make this like a hole which I can put the LEDs into but it means that when I'm printing this has to be aligned this way so this side up in that case for this part I will need support but uh, if you ever printed with supports you know that supports leave a rough finish so there's a setting a few settings actually in cura related to support interface support interface is basically the layer or a few layers between the actual object and uh, the support and uh, after some tweaking with the support interface settings i managed to turn this rough uneven surface into something like a texture like a fabric so I don't know how it will look like in camera but uh, in reality it actually looks like fabric and it looks quite nice on the wall but uh, it took like I don't know 10 iterations something like that to come up with this kind of finish and uh, it also pops out nicely because uh, this is a smooth surface and this is a fabric-like surface and um, also for the next few iterations I mean later versions uh, or later lights based on this prototype is that uh, yeah we have problem here this is not a snap fit case and I just realized that my initial intent was to uh, provide this extra height here, right here to hide the PCB but of course it didn't work out because of the GST connector and because of the solder joints but then I just realized that actually when I'm printing this way up then I can just raise this wall more to hide everything including the connectors and if the connectors are standardized I can create here some more sophisticated, more sophisticated uh, cutouts not like this one for the cable but maybe directly for the connectors so you can actually just have the connector on the side of the whole fixture now let's uh, see the automation part because that was also funny as I mentioned before, I've just learned about uh, uh, ESP Home. So here's the thing. For this project, I didn't really want to write any Arduino code. Simply because uh, it was meant for a simple project. And I didn't want to write too much code, custom firmware. But I needed a lot of features like over the air upgrades because I don't want to unmount the light. Uh, every time I want to upgrade a firmware and um, I wanted to do home assistant integration and probably integration with the Amazon Echo so a lot and uh, to do this without uh, custom firmware you need something and this is where I mean you need something that is written by others and that has all these features and uh, this is where ESP Home came to the picture so this is the first time I've ever used ESP Home and it turned out that it is so so easy to use. Basically what you see on the screen right now is a descriptor YAML file and all that is you need of course the, besides the installation of ESP Home to have a custom compiled firmware for your Node MCU or D1 Mini or ESP32 or you name it because it supports a lot of boards and uh, for example here you can see the configuration for the given board I use the Diva Mini for this smart light and uh, out of the box it has all you probably need like Wi-Fi, 
over the air upgrades as i said it even has an access point a fallback access point which means that if it was for example if it is not able to connect to the wi-fi you can still connect to it with your phone and uh, change the settings if something went terribly wrong so just like with uh, out of the box uh, commercial uh, smart devices this is pretty cool also have an api which you can integrate primarily for home assistant and you have the over the uh, over the air upgrades and of course uh, you can uh, specify a lot of things because uh, esp home is a generic i would call it a meta firmware or something like that because Technically, it's not a specialized firmware, but it's like a framework for creating your own firmware. I mean, uh, by default, it's all just configuration like here with the RGB LEDs. But in fact, you can, for example, use uh, something called a feature called Lambda to write your own effects. And uh, you can do a lot uh, to customize this firmware or actually customize this configuration file. And then when you are done, from this configuration file, a firmware will be compiled and uploaded uh, to your device. And uh, it's really easy, just really a few commands. So I've never meant this video to be a tutorial or something like this. It's just more like a project showcase because um, I wanted to show how this project ended up or ended up may not be the best expression, but uh, instead I wanted to show um, how it is progressing or what is left from doing it and basically from the firmware point of view from the code point of view I'm like 100% done it's integrated with home assistant uh, integrated with uh, all the automation I need and through home assistant I can integrate with pretty, pretty much everything so this part is pretty cool and um, yeah I fell in love with uh, ESP Home and right now at this point I'm thinking about turning most of my devices to ESP Home because I have a few sensors and whatnot running a custom firmware and uh, upgrading firmware on those is yeah, like a hassle. I need to uh, bring them offline, I need to connect to them to my PC and whatnot and uh, upgrade the firmware so it's suboptimal. But with ESP Home, that is all done for me. So it is really, really easy. Okay, without further ado, that is pretty much I wanted to show about this project. Okay, so the next logical question would be, what's next for this project? And uh, I, as I've explained before, there's not much. I mean, the software part is done, the home automation part is done. Um, I'm pretty much satisfied with the LEDs and um, with my new soldering iron, the TS-100. I can create such protoboards quite easily. So yeah, I guess the weakest part is still the 3D printed enclosure. And um, yeah, we probably need a few more iterations to have its final form. And um, as I said, I will create a few more of these with different figures so I can daisy chain them for the decoration but other than that I consider this project done and a success uh, my daughters already love them or love it so yeah it's cool however on the other hand and via working on this I uh, found a way a drastically different way to print such uh, enclosures and uh, I want to make a few more experiments with it and probably it will work out nicely hopefully it will work out nicely so expect at least one more video on this topic on the channel I mean RGB lights are still cool right anyway uh, thanks for watching this video it's time to say goodbye if you like the video please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see what's coming up next on the channel until then See you. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. 
Thank you again and see you next time.